What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. Oh my god, these priests. Look at these priests. All their things from beyond, the spirits are looking good, man. People have been asking me about Shadow Priests in some of the comments, and uh, they're looking good. They're looking really good. If you were frustrated with Shadow Priests like over the last couple years, then honestly, they're in a really great place now. They seem to be in all my dungeons that I'm running, and um, they're doing fantastic damage. So I wouldn't worry about Priests at all. I think they're doing just fine. But today we're going to talk about Windwalker Monk, and specifically I want to talk about Single target damage for Windwalker Monk. Because I did a I did a video talking about Windwalker Monk, showed you dungeon footage uh, of doing lots of AoE damage, and now I'm going to sort of get specific about a single target build here. So um, let me talk first of all about this is in the context of a raid. Okay, so we're talking we're thinking about how do we do a raid environment for Monk? What's that going to look like? Number one, we got to talk about the class tree really quick because I want to talk about like what defensives can Monk bring that will make it um, sustainable or you know strong in a raid environment. And oh my god, Windwalker Monk has so many defensives to choose from. It's crazy. I was initially looking at this tree and I was a little bit frustrated by the pathing that was available because you have to take things like paralysis essentially or disable if you want to get down to fortifying brew. Now... There's a couple of things that I could change in the top part of this tree. You don't need paralysis. I could actually take probably vivify. Let's see if we can do that actually right now. Let's go there. Let's go there. And then instead of paralysis, we take disable. Okay, you with me so far? We do need to take detox because we have to take ferocity of Zwen. Increases all damage dealt by 4%. But now we can take the Fort Brew buff here. I can take this still. And then I need to take uh, this into this into that and then i was taking close to heart now so this is slightly different but you could take some expel harm stuff you could take generous pour of course gives you avoidance but uh close to heart's really good too it increases you and allies within 10 yards have eight percent increased healing taken if i was to take two points into this let's just pretend i did that for now eight percent increased healing received for all allies within 10 yards that's every melee in your group gets 8% more healing. That's kind of outrageous if you think about it. It's a lot of extra healing. Um, like if a druid just puts efflorescence, efflorescence on your feet. Efflorescence, sorry. If a resto shaman just wants to put healing rain down. I mean, they're just doing 8% more healing to all the melee people. Which is really nuts to me. On top of that, as I was saying before, you can get fortifying brew. You can get dampen harm. And you can get diffuse magic three solid defensive buttons already in the class tree for you the healing on top of that you can get these vivify buffs that i was telling you about so um every 10 seconds your next vivify is instant and vivify healing is increased by 40 percent so we could let's just say we get rid of this instant cast one so that we can come down here and get our summon the white tiger statue which i do want for damage but that's healing there. You can get um, more healing by 8%. So you get 8% more healing, and then you get 8% more healing taken. Um, you get Chi Burst, which of course gives you healing and gives you Chi, which is very important. And then you get Eye of the Tiger for more healing. So um, just on the class side alone, you can get Soothing Mist as well. On the class side alone, it's outrageous to me how many defensive buttons you're going to get as a Windwalker Monk. And how much healing you can do to yourself to keep yourself alive in a raid environment, right? The Really, the more powerful buttons are, of course, any damage reduction you can get. So 15% more max health reduces damage taken by 15%. 20% re uh, damage re reduction up to 50%. 60% magic damage reduction. Insane. Those are so strong in a raid environment because usually in a raid environment, things are hitting you incredibly, incredibly hard. I'm just going to adjust my camera there. There we go. So... Class side of the tree, very, very good. Lots of really good buttons here. On top of that, you're going to want to take um, Resonant Fists and Summon the White Tiger Statue. You don't have to take Summon the White Tiger Statue, but it actually does some damage. Where is it here? Is it... Uh, oh, it is way down here. Okay, so it, you don't actually... Like, it's only... Those two combined for a total of 1.5% of your damage. In an AoE situation, both of these do more damage. But So in reality, you don't have to take these. You could maybe go over and get Bounce Back when your hit um, deals more than 20% of your maximum health 
um, you reduce all damage taken again by, I think it's up to 20%. Let me just check that really quick. Uh, let's just, uh, I need that. I need that. I'm an idiot. Let's just get rid of this for a second. It is 20% damage reduction. So absolutely bonkers right there. Um, I think it's just, yeah, it's just really, really crazy. So you could get 20% DR again from here. There's so many ways to reduce damage that you're taking as a Windwalker monk. You just have to experiment with it there. So that's the class side of the tree. Those are the defensives and the healing. What about this single target build? What are we doing for the spec side of the tree? What is the single target build going to entail? Let me just go through it section by section. So we're going to start out. You want to make sure you get Ascension. Again, you could get Touch of Karma. Um, Again, another outrage. Like if I had to get rid of this and go... One into Touch of Karma and get rid of one into Flashing Fists. That could be the build that you run. If you really need another defensive, you could take one point out of Flashing Fists and lose 10% of your Fists of Fury damage. If you don't want to do that, for obvious reasons, because you already have a million defensives over here on this side, fair enough. You don't have to do that. You just keep your double Fists of Fury damage here. So, But that's something you could do. So you have Ascension. And then uh, Touch of the Tiger for Tiger Palm damage. Then there's a couple things that you can do. I do take Strike of the Wind Lord here, and <clears throat> it might not necessarily be the best idea. Strike of the Wind Lord does do a decent amount of damage. So Thunder Fist, which is the secondary part of Strike of the Wind Lord, it does 3.1% all on its own. And then Strike of the Wind Lord is doing almost 2%. So that's 5% of my damage right there, just in these two. Even though it's an AoE ability, it is doing 5% of my damage. That is a very substantial amount of damage. So very, very good. You're going to absolutely want to take Glory of the Dawn. You have to take this. And then you have to take Fleet, uh, Fast Feet sorry, in the class tree for the extra Rising Sun Kick damage. But Glory of the Dawn makes Rising Sun Kick potentially hit again. And then it restores one Chi, which is the really big part of it, actually. Another way to give yourself some extra Chi is because of Power Strikes. So Tiger Palm generates an additional Chi every 15 seconds. Very good. And then... Open Palm Strikes, Fist of Fury has a chance to refund one Chi while it's channeling. So all these little things that are giving you Chi back, which is really important on the single target build. The way that I've chose to do the center uh, midsection of this tree is, again, take Strike of the Windlord and take Dance of Chi Chi. I think that having this free uh, Dance of Chi Chi proc is insanely good on single target because, number one, it allows you to cast Spinning Crane Kick for free. You're never going to cast Spinning Crane Kick anyway, but... You get to cast it for free, and it does double damage. So it spends one GCD for you, which allows you to regenerate some energy, and it does extra damage, which is good. It does enough damage on its own to justify taking it in a single target situation. So Dance of Chi-Chi is really good. The other thing you could do is go get Shadow Boxing Treads, which I think I was initially running in my very first iteration of this build. Um, Blackout Kick does 20% more damage. You don't care that it's striking two additional targets. You just care that it does 20% more damage. And why? Because you're going to be taking Teachings of the Monastery. So this is a sort of new addition to the single target kit for Wimwalker Monk. And Tiger Palm causes your next Blackout uh, Kick to strike an additional time, up to three. So then your Blackout Kick could strike four times. Boom, 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 boom. And Blackout Kick has a 15% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Rising Sun Kick. That is exactly what you're going to want. These Shadow Priests are everywhere, I tell you. So you really want to be resetting the cooldown on Rising Sun Kick because it is your main single target button that you are pressing to do damage. And of course, it'll trigger Glory of the Dawn, which we want, we want it to do as well. So that's kind of the middle section of the tree. I'm taking Serenity right now. One thing I've noticed is that Storm Earth and Fire does not have two charges anymore. I don't know if that was just Blizzard intentionally doing that or or what's going on, but <clears throat> traditionally Storm Earth and Fire has had two charges because of a talent that you took, and um, that talent is now gone. That doesn't the talent doesn't exist anymore, so we we don't we don't even have access to two di two charges of um, Storm Earth and Fire. So I've tried Serenity and I really like it, and I'm going to show you why in a second. Also, we're getting cooldown reduction on Serenity every two chi you spend. Okay, so that's the mid section of the tree there. Um, let's get to the bottom section. You're going to get Zuen, of course, and then a lot of the Zuen buffs here. I have Empowered Tiger Lightning. I have a uh, chance to summon Zuen when you cast Fist of Fury. It's a guaranteed chance eventually. And then Rising Sun Kick and, and Fist of Fury combo. Rising Sun Kick reduces the cooldown of Fist of Fury. Fist of Fury ends. The critical strike chance of Rising Sun Kick goes up. So that's a really important combo because you want to channel Fist of Fury and then... 
hit Rising Sun Kick, and then you want to have a couple of Blackout Kicks ready to go to try and reduce the cooldown on Rising Sun Kick again so you can press it again. Because when you're done channeling Fists of Fury, you have 50% crit on Rising Sun Kick. So you want to try and get as many Rising Sun Kicks in that 5 second window as you can. That's kind of the idea there. And then um, <clears throat> we do have Invoker's Delights. You get 33% haste when your Celestial is summoned. Again, we're going to summon our Celestial which is Zuen. We're going to summon him manually, and we're going to get Fury of Zuen from uh, the combo strike stacking up, eventually getting another cast on him. And when that happens, you get a bunch of haste, which is really good. So on top of that, the final piece of this is grabbing more Rising Sun Kick damage and then getting Feline Stomp. And I think that some people... Um, I want to explain why I take Feline Stomp. So it is, of course, mainly an AoE ability, but when you take Feline Harmony... Your Feline Stomp resets more often, which is very important, and enemies take 8% more damage. So this gives you 8% more damage. Think of this button as simply a button that says you deal 8% more damage now. The damage from Feline Stomp is not remarkable. It's, it's not. It's way down here. It's only doing something like 2% of our damage, almost 2% of our damage, but... What it is doing is giving us that 8% more damage to all of our other abilities, and that is a substantial amount of damage. 8% more is huge. So the other main thing about Feyland Stop is that it resets very, very often, and it's free. Anytime you can get an ability that's free, that resets itself often, in the Windwalker Monk kit is very good because it helps you maintain your mastery. Abilities that deal your abilities deal 22% more damage when they are not a repeat of a previous ability. So very important, I think, to Feline Stomp. I've experimented with Whirling Dragon Punch. I've experimented with Last Emperor's Capacitor for the Crackling Jade Lightning. Uh, the experiment with Zuen's Bond. Crackling Jade Lightning was like really f not good in my opinion. I, I got I did a lot less damage when I was doing that um that little uh uh, dummy test. Let me see if I can actually pull it up really quick here. I don't know which one I was doing. Let's try this one. Uh, I don't think it was this one. We did about 40k there. Here's Crackling J Lightning here. So you can see overall we did about 35k instead of 40. So what I've been able to average is about 40k on average on single target. And I'll get to the dummy in just a second. But the, the Crackling J Lightning one just didn't seem to work. So this is where I've kind of settled with my build. I like having Strike of the Wind Lord. I like having Dance of Chi Chi. I'm not taking Shadow Boxing, Boxing Treads. Although you really could. I think it's perfectly fine to take this talent. I'm taking Feline Stomp with no Whirling Dragon Punch. And then we're taking the Zuen stuff here at the bottom. Always take Teachings of the Monastery. So let's see what this looks like. Um, I'm going to show you. We're going to start out with Chi Burst into Summon the White Tiger statue because he lasts for two minutes sorry he lasts for 30 seconds so you're going to start out with those two into a tiger palm into um i would say uh, feline stomp and then serenity serenity you want to be very careful when you press it because you want to be pressing your spenders as soon as serenity goes off okay so here we go this is what it's going to look like let's go to current segment here we go something like this here we go tiger palm feline stomp serenity let me go in here. We're going to do another Rising Sun Kick. Oh, I meant to summon Zuen. I'm an idiot. Here we go. Much better. Makes everything channel faster, right? Okay, now we're going to reset it. With There we go. We got the we got the teachings of the Monastery uh, proc. Feline stomps back. Okay, now we're into our regular rotation. Resetting. So I'm always trying to reset Rising Sun Kick with Blackout Kick. There, I did it there. I actually shouldn't have done it there because it was that was the wrong time to do it. But I'm going to avoid pressing Touch of Death. Um, it's just not really like I'm just kind of cheating, right? Feline stomps back. So we're kind of waiting for a Dance of Chiji proc. That would be nice, if possible. Okay, we'll do this into this. There we go. That's Oh, it's not even showing. Oh, this is going to be really bad. Nothing's showing up. It's actually really... I'm going to have to rely on noise. There it is. We got it. <laughs> I literally can't hear anything. Like, I can't... It's not showing up on the meter. Okay. Serenity's almost back. So we'll get ready for that. Here we go. Serenity time.
We kind of just want to press Rising Sun Kick, to be honest, but it's okay. So this is the basic build. We're going to hover around 40k. This is where you're going to sit. Okay, that's about it there. So this is almost the entire build. And you're basically, you know, it's a regular build for Windwalker Monk that you're trying to maximize your mastery. And you're also trying to sort of engage with this new combo of Blackout Kick resetting the cooldown of Rising Sun Kick. That's the main interaction you're kind of looking for. Get to end it again. That is the main thing that you're kind of looking for is like, can I get my Black Oak Kick here? I'll try again. Okay, didn't get it there. But if you do get it to reset, of course, Rising Sun Kick hits so incredibly hard. It just, it's just amazing. Strike of the Windlord is also very, very good. It doesn't seem like it should be good because it's primarily like an AOE focused ability. But my God, does it hurt. Okay, here we go. Serenity, number three. Oh, we got a reset right away. Look at that. That was huge. I'm going to hit this. There we go. Got a reset again. There we go. Rising Sun Kick into a reset. Didn't get it. That's okay. That's what you're kind of fishing for right there, guys. So that's kind of how it works. That's the build. You can see we're hovering right around 40k. That's basically where you're going to sit. 40k. I did do Touch of Death at the end just to get us above 40k. Okay, I was cheating. That's my bad. Let's look at the damage breakdown. It's, of course, going to be your two big spenders, Rising Sun Kick, and I had a couple of 129,000, uh, 129k Rising Sun Kicks there. So, insane, insane damage. It's hitting very, very hard, and it's, of course, hitting multiple times um, because of Glory of the Dawn. Now, the Glory of the Dawn, again, it doesn't do a lot of damage. I'm not sure if it's uh, if that's a bug, but it didn't do a lot of damage. But what it does do is restore one chi, and that is the biggest component of Glory of the Dawn. It restores one chi. That's really what you're looking for. Anytime you can get extra chi back as a Windwalker Monk, it's absolutely crazy. So Fist of Fury damage, of course, very high as well. And uh, these two are buffing each other because of the... Um, invo uh, not Invoker's Light, sorry, uh, Zuen's Battle Gear. So this is, again, a Legendary from Shadowlands. Rising Sun Kick, uh, crits reduce the cooldown of Fist of Fury, and so on and so forth. You get crit on uh, Rising Sun Kick as well. So those are balancing each other out. The Blackout Kick damage is quite good. That's about 12% of our damage, even without us taking Shadowboxing Treads. So you can see the Teachings of the Monastery is really coming in clutch there, making Blackout Kick hit a ton of extra times. Um, which is really, really good. Thunder Fist, here it is, 3.2% of our damage. And then the, uh, let me find the other one. Strike of the Windlord here did 2.7. So plus 3.2, that's 6% of our damage just from this Thunder Fist combo. Again, it doesn't look like it should be that much because it's an AOE ability, but it actually does hit very, very hard. So this is kind of a setup that I would go for, guys. If you're looking for a single target build in raid for Windwalker Monk, you got your triple defensives over here. Diffuse Magic, Dampen Harm, and Fortifying Brew. You could take Touch of Karma if you also wanted another one, although you really don't need it. This is the build that I would kind of set up for you guys if you want to have a fairly smooth uh, chi generating build that just gets you there. It just get the damage just gets there. I'm almost doing forty thousand damage on a single target boss fight, which is which is really good. That's one of the highest I've seen of any class and spec that I've played so far on pure single target is 40k. That's a lot of damage. So how do you? How would you modify this? You could take Shadowboxing Treads if you want to. You could also take Whirling Dragon Punch if you really wanted to. You could like get rid of Feline Harmony if you want, but that's your 8% damage boost. Once again, remember, 8% damage boost, really, really important there. So there are ways to modify this tree. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. How would you modify these different trees that I've set up for your single target build for Windwalker Monk. Let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. So that's it for the Windwalker Monk, the single target build. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one.